It has been 4 years since God of War 2018 was released, and to this day, I still have a hard time picking my favorite story moment from the game. There's obviously the moment Kratos tells Atreus he's a god, the flashback sequence in Helheim that reveals to Atreus what his father did to Zeus, and of course, we can't forget the reveal of Loki himself. But I think a moment that doesn't get enough attention is Kratos' journey through the light of Alfheim. The music, scenery, as well as the dialogue just draws you in completely. Also, this is the first time in this story that Kratos gets a glimpse into the thoughts of Atreus, which surely starts to change his relationship with him. So if he tries, I'll try. But if he doesn't, please come back. I know you're out there somewhere. The section of the game is simply beautiful, and there's also a lot of mysteries for people like me who like to obsess about the lore of the series. I've made several videos about the light of Alfheim, which is why today I want to focus on the other side of the topic that doesn't get enough attention. While Kratos was in the light, what happened to Atreus? Sadly, this is something the game never brings up again. All we know is that Kratos was in the light for a long time and Atreus became a complete badass by killing an army of Dark Elves, one of the hardest enemies in the game. Due to this lack of information from the game, we're gonna have to turn to the God of War novel to find out what happened to Atreus while Kratos was in the light. Now before I get started, I'd really recommend you get this novel if you haven't before. It's full of interesting details that every God of War fan will enjoy, and if you get it on Audible, Mimir will read it for you. It doesn't get any better than that. The hive collapsed around them, caving in upon itself and releasing the light of Alfheim. Now, for today's question, there's really only two important moments that you need to know, but I want to start from the very beginning so you get the proper context. So let's begin. After four hours had passed, Atreus began to get hungry. Then he saw two ravens circling around the light, but when they determined Atreus had seen them, they flew away and escaped through a crack in the ceiling. This moment in the book might be important because these ravens might actually be Hagen and Mooning, also known as Odin's ravens, the ones who have the job of gathering information and bringing it to the Old Father himself. Now what's interesting here is that this is one of the details that seems to deviate from the story of the game. In God of War 2018, Kratos and Atreus interact with many of Odin's ravens, but not Hagen and Mooning. This could be a minor contradiction between the book and the game, but I think there's a way to reconcile these two details. I personally believe that Odin is in control of all the ravens from his pantheon, and he has given them the job of collecting information for him. But there's a hierarchy. We have the regular ravens we see in God of War 2018, but at the very top, we have Hagen and Mooning, who personally report to the Old Father. But the question is, why are Odin's top ravens spying on Atreus? Why is he so important to the Old Father's plans? Well, we're not exactly sure about that. From God of War 2018, we know that Odin needed Atreus, or the last giant, to find a way into Jotunheim. But I'm sure Odin needs Atreus for something else, something more nefarious. But that's a video for another day. Anyway, after the ravens flew away, he started to worry his father was trapped inside the light. But he talked himself out of going into the light because he thought his father would be making his way back at any time. Then Atreus heard a noise and thought it was Freya, since a few hours before she seemed to have appeared out of nowhere but realized that it was most likely hunger and fatigue having an effect on his mental state. Also, I just want to point out that originally the game was going to have eating moments, but it ended up getting cut because it was too awkward, I think. Anyway, afterwards Atreus sat next to a pillar to wait for his father to return, but fatigue set in and he fell asleep. He woke up thinking that it had only been a small nap, but it turns out that it was the next day. Atreus had slept through the whole night. At this point, Kratos had been in the light for hours, quite possibly a full day. This sent Atreus into a panic attack, so he started yelling at the light, hoping his father would hear his voice and somehow find his way back to him. But then, he heard two dark elves walking in his direction. He managed to hide from these two dark elves, but then a change in the light of Alfheim caught his attention. So he leaped from his hiding place, hoping to see his father. But what he saw were dark elves emerging from a shadowy corner of the temple. But the book describes this encounter with the Dark Elves in a very interesting way. In the game, we only see the aftermath of what happened, and it makes it seem like Atreus killed an entire army of Dark Elves, well, Kratos style. But this is what the book says. Dark Elves emerge from a shadowy corner of the temple. 
They saw him. Atreus squared his shoulders and braced for their attack. They formed up to charge. First two, then two more. Did you catch that? They only charged at Atreus in pairs. This makes me think that the Dark Elves were not trying to overwhelm Atreus and kill him. They only wanted to capture him. Something their king had tried to do earlier. But the question is, why did they try to capture Atreus? Was it done with good or bad intentions? Well, at the moment that's not very clear. But I want to point out something interesting I noticed in the God of War Ragnarok trailer. In the trailer, there's a shot of Kratos and Atreus running through an unknown place. Above them, you see a dark elf flying over them. Almost like he ignored Kratos and Atreus. Or maybe he was simply helping his allies by attacking the light elf instead. From the game's description on the PlayStation website, we see that one of Kratos and Atreus' goal for the story of the next game is going to be to gather allies in preparation for the Battle of Ragnarok. What if the Dark Elves are one of these allies? And ever since the events of God of War 2018, they saw the potential Atreus had, so they tried to make him join their side. Atreus of course mistook their approach as a threat, so he killed them all. The mystery of the Dark Elves' interest with Atreus, as well as the light of Alfheim in general, remains to be answered. And for those of you who think that Alfheim will play no part in the events of God of War Ragnarok, let me remind you that according to lore and legends, Atreus constantly dreams about the light of Alfheim and wonders if his father told him the truth of what he saw in there. Who knows, maybe the Dark Elves will help Atreus bring his mother back from the afterlife. That is, if she's going to return. But what do you guys think about what happened to Atreus while his father was inside the light? Do you think hugging and mooning spine on him will be important in the next game? What about the Dark Elves wanting to capture him? Whatever your thoughts and theories are, make sure to leave them in the comments section below. As always, I want to give a big thanks to all of my members for supporting the channel monthly. People like Postmortem, Black Tortoise, Apollyon, Demon's Toy, Edgar Valla, and many many more are the main reason I'm able to call YouTube my job. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I would also like to thank everyone who goes out of their way to like and share the videos. I know this doesn't seem like much, but trust me, it really does help me put me in the algorithm. So with that said, don't forget to subscribe for more God of War content, and as always remember, go forth in the name of Ragnarok.